14 candidates, two front runners, E. J. Myung from the ruling Democratic Party, and Yun Suk Yul from the Conservative Opposition's People Power Party. All are vying for the post of president in what's seen as the tightest election race in over two decades. I think Yoon is, is leading um, in, in some of the polls, but it's not a huge margin. So I think it's still a, um, a difficult, it's, it's really a toss up. But since the campaign began, real policy issues have been relegated to the background. Instead, personal attacks, scandals and graft allegations have taken centre stage. What they differ is in the area of foreign policy. Both have adopted contrasting approaches in dealing with North Korea's nuclear threat. 이재명 후보는 그 아까도 얘기했지만은 한반도 평화 프로세스 그러니까 문재인 정부의 대북 정책을 개성 발전시키는 방향으로 정책을 추진할 겁니다. What Yoon has suggested as his his uh, method is preemptive strike, and that's not the ideal form of proactiveness. Who of the two leading candidates will emerge victorious? Will the next president be able to lay the foundation for permanent peace and stability in the Asia-Pacific region? Or will it only ratchet up the already heightened tensions in the Korean Peninsula? On March 9, 2022, South Koreans will go to the polls to elect a new president. The incumbent Moon Jae-in is now in his last few months in office and is not eligible to run for president for a second term. Under the Korean constitution, the president can only serve a single five-year term with no possibility of re-election. But how has he fared as president in the last five years? Has he been able to achieve many of his election promises, including his vision of achieving a permanent peace with North Korea? Or is that nothing more than just an elusive dream? And will his successor be any better? Leader of the Liberal Democratic Party, 69-year-old Moon Jae-in was swept to power in 2017. His victory in the May 2017 election ended nearly a decade of Conservative Party rule. It also put an end to months of political turmoil that led to the impeachment of his predecessor, Park Geun-hye, South Korea's first female president and daughter of the country's third president, Park Chung-hee. Park was driven out of office over an extensive corruption scandal which rattled the entire nation. She faced 18 charges related to bribery, coercion and abuse of power. Among others, Park was accused of extorting tens of millions of dollars from scores of business conglomerates in return for business favours. She was also charged with pressuring companies, including electronics giant Samsung, to donate millions of dollars to charitable foundations run by her close and trusted confidant Choi Sun Sil. Public frustrations over her inept leadership first came to the fore back in March 2014. That's when a ferry carrying 476 people, mostly students, 
went down off the country's southern coast, killing more than 300 people. Park was widely criticized for her handling of the tragedy, with many questions being raised over perceived corruption and the lax safety standards. The Korean media even probed into Park's absence in the critical hours of the lackluster rescue operations. As details of the scandal began to emerge, angry crowds, estimated around 500,000 to 1.5 million people, thronged central Seoul. They protested for weeks, calling for her resignation. In December 2016, Park was impeached by lawmakers with an overwhelming vote of 234 to 56, stripping away her executive powers. And on March 10, 2017, the Constitutional Court upheld that decision, making her the first South Korean president to be thrown out of office by a court. In 2018, Park was found guilty of 16 out of 18 charges leveled against her and was sentenced to 24 years in prison for corruption and abuse of power. Her political downfall paved the way for the rise of Moon Jae-in, leader of the Liberal Democratic Party. Of course, I think Moon Jae-in took very huge advantage of, the, of you know, this uh, tragic uh, political accident that, you know, he was a very uh, minor you know, figure in the Korean politics up until this impeachment occurred. But uh, more or less, he was lucky to take advantage of this that, you know, event and, uh, and rise to the power. The Park administration was riddled with scandals, um, with a uh, president that was um, not really communicative with, with the public, so she was hermetically sealed. Um, and wasn't really listening to what the population was expecting of her as well. So Moon Jae-in uh, represented something that was going to be a complete juxtaposition to what Park represented. Um, he promised um, social equality, he promised justice and fairness, and essentially um, a, a refreshing break um, uh, from the, the establishment. And this is how he was elected as president um, in May of 2017. Mr. Moon started his career as a human rights lawyer. He then served as the chief of staff in Ro Moo Hyun's administration, South Korea's ninth president. Mr. Ro was known for his policy of peaceful engagement and rapprochement with North Korea, an approach which he had vowed to rekindle. Among others, Mr. Moon had promised to create 500,000 jobs a year through a sustainable economic growth address inequality and eradicate corruption. 대통령이 되신 뒤에 에, 나라다운 나라, 공정한 나라, 정의로운 나라를 만드시겠다는 비전을 가지셨고요. 그리고 어, 특히 그 국정농단으로 인한 망가진 시스템을 복원해서 민주주의를 구현하는 그런 어, 나라를 만들겠다. 특히 국민들이 평화적인 시위를 통해서 어, 정권이 창출된 것이기 때문에 그 국민의 그 어, 정의와 공정을 요구하는 그런 요구에 답하는 그런 나라. 그래서 국정농단 세력을 척결하고 그리고 정의를 바로 세우는 그런 어, 나라를 만들겠다는 비전을 갖고 어, 임기를 시작하셨죠. 
but top of Moon's agenda was to usher in a new era of inter-Korean relations. He expended immense political capital to ensure engagement with Pyongyang continues. 대통령이 취임하고 4일 만에 북한이 미사일을 발사할 정도로 남북 관계는 대단히 긴장이 높았습니다. 그런 상황에서 문재인 대통령은 네 가지를 약속을 했습니다. 첫 번째는 전쟁 불가, 즉 평화로서 문제를 해결한다라는 거였고 두 번째는 대한민국이 주도적으로 문제를 해결하겠다. 즉세 번째는 북한과의 관계에 있어서 제재만이 아니라 대화를 병행하겠다라는 문제였습니다. 이첫 번째, 두 번째, 세 번째가 모아져서 항구적인 평화 체제를 만들겠다라는 네 번째 과제까지 이어집니다. 이네 가지 과제를 이루기 위해서 문재인 대통령은 많은 노력을 기울여 왔는데요. 그 결과물이 2018년 판문점 선언에 담겨 있습니다. 남북 관계는 한문점 선언과 평양 선언 그리고 싱가폴 선언으로 이어져서 성과를 이루고 있고요. 어, 예, 예를 들어서 어, 2010년부터 지난 정부 동안 매년 33회에 걸쳐서 DMZ 근처에서의 남북 간의 충돌이 있어 왔습니다. 어, 판문점 선언 이후에는 어, 3년 동안 단한 번의 충돌밖에 없었다는 점들이 한반도의 평화가 일정하게 공고히 되었다라는 것을 증명한다고 생각합니다. But five years on, the stunning progress made by Mr. Moon hit a gridlock. Talks stalled in 2019 amid disagreements over international demands that the North surrender its arsenal of nuclear weapons. Pyongyang had called on Washington and Seoul to ease sanctions and drop what it termed as hostile policies before denuclearization talks can begin. The US, however, was unwilling to ease the crippling economic sanctions until North Korea takes concrete efforts at dismantling its nuclear weapons program. I think the Moon uh, uh, policy objective in, in terms of North Korea is two poles. One is to improve relations uh, between the two, you know, uh, two parties, and the other is to denuclearize North Korean nuclear program. And I think that the two these, you know, aims all uh, uh, already failed. Uh, we don't have any progress in uh, North Korea denuclearization, as you, as you, as everybody watches. Uh, what we're actually, what we have observed is, this, uh, you know, North Korea is consistently increased its nuclear capabilities. And in 2018, they, you know, in the New Year's address, Kim Jong-un declared uh, he achieved historic aim, aim of becoming a nuclear weapon power. And also he promised to improve his missile capabilities uh, continuously. And as of, you know, this January, we have a series of new, uh, new you know, uh, supersonic missile tests from North Korea. And on the other hand, our relations with North Korea, President Moon, I think he did his best to improve relations, to approach North Korea, to provide assistance as much as he can, especially, especially to North Korean leadership. But he failed, largely because of international pressure and international sanctions. So how will his legacy impact his party's performance in this election? Do voters want more of the same? Or would they take the chance on People Power Party's Yoon Suk Yul? South Korea's ruling Democratic Party has named former Gyeonggi Province Governor Lee Jae-myung as their candidate for the presidential election to replace the incumbent Moon Jae-in. The lawyer turned politician, Yi is well known for his populist and radical economic policies. And that includes the introduction of a universal basic income. If elected, he has pledged to hand out 1 million won or 840 US dollars to every citizen and 2 million won or 
1,700 US dollars to 19 to 29 year olds. It's his way of trying to reduce income inequality in the country. He's known for being this firebrand populist, um, you know, successful social welfare programs. And um, his, his, I guess his claim to fame now is, is to bring uh, this, the universal basic income to South Korea. Um, there's a question though, as to how that's going to be delivered. Such unorthodox welfare policies have been popular with voters in South Korea many of whom suffer from persistent youth unemployment, soaring housing prices, and high rates of relative poverty, especially among the old. That's why, during two of his four-year terms as mayor of Seongnam, a city of one million people in Gyeonggi province near Seoul, Mr. Yi introduced unconditional payments for young people. For example, he offered postnatal care and school uniforms, all for free. He also extended similar welfare policies when he was governor of the Gyeonggi province. And that proved very popular to residents. He knows what, how and when to talk to the public to appeal to them. And that's, that's, that's been, I think, is his biggest selling point is to understand um, the small pockets of South Korean population um, that he can appeal to and instantly get their votes. Um, so that I think is his charm. Um, but when it comes to substance, uh, we do wonder uh, what he's going to be able to deliver that's going to be significantly different or an improvement from um, the Moon administration. But since the campaign began, Lee Jae-myung and his rival Yoon Suk-yul, the two leading candidates in the election, have been dogged by allegations of corruption and abuse of power. Several of Mr. Yi's former associates have been arrested in recent weeks. It was in connection with a sprawling corruption scandal involving lucrative property investments in Seongnam. The origins of the project date back to his tenure as mayor and the fallout nearly cost him his victory in the primary. Mr. E, however, has denied all allegations and has promised to cooperate with the authorities. The presidential candidate is surrounded with so much controversy and scandals. Not just Taejangdo and his, his, his sons, of but also a series of things happened also, uh, uh, in regard to Mr. Lee's uh, life as a lawyer and also you know, as a city mayor and also uh, the Gyeonggi, uh, governor of the Gyeonggi provinces. There are so many uh, you know, the scandals and allegations and issues raised. And uh, you know, the Korean people is just, just upset to see you know, these, these, all these developments. And I think that uh, there were you know, these scandals uh, will be another major uh, factor to determine the presidency. A member of the Democratic Party, Do Jong Hwan, however, claims that the corruption allegation has already been settled and that E has now been cleared of any wrongdoing. The Dangdong problem, 이미 지난번 국정감사를 통해서 본인이 직접 그 문제에 대해서 적극적 해명을 한바 있고 그 적극적 해명 이후에는 대장동 이슈는 어, 초기처럼 그렇게 크게 이슈화 되지 않고 지금 많은 부분이 소명이 되었고 또 관련자들 부당한 이익을 얻은 사람들은 그 사람들대로 처벌을 받고 있고. I don't believe that Lee Jae Myung is free of any charges, but I also don't believe that Yoon Sung Yeol is clean or his wife is clean. So when you're thinking about culpability here, um, neither of these two major candidates, they're, 
they're not clean candidates. And that's what's frustrating for most people. Typically, I think um, a scandal that is so widespread and frankly, um, quite malicious and evil uh, should be gaining much more um, outrage and, and a demand from the South Korean public for you know, greater investigations and greater accountability on, on Lee. Uh, but we're not seeing that. I think, of course, COVID-19 might have something to do with it, where people are more focused on, um, you know, not getting sick and, and getting tested and, and making sure that, you know, economically they're, they're surviving. On the foreign policy front, the expectation is that Mr. Yi will continue President Moon Jae-in's policies of engagement with North Korea. But will more of the same soft approach be enough to keep the peace in the Korean Peninsula. Korean-Peninsula.我呢，文재인정부가한반도평화プロセスを主持를한데있어서훌륭한업적이라고할수있는것은미국대통령과북한의공무위원장이직접바로그싱가포르에서카펠라호텔에서만나서정상회담을하도
If the Liberals are banking on a former governor, E.J. Myung, to ensure that the Democratic Party remains in power, the Conservative People Power Party is betting on Yun Sun Yo to create an upset for the ruling party. Mr. Yun is a career prosecutor with no experience in electoral politics. He made his name by investigating into Park Geun-hye's administration's numerous scandals, eventually imprisoning her and her predecessor, Lee myung Bak for graft-related offences. As a result, Mr. Yoon rose rapidly through the ranks to become the head of the Public Prosecutor's Office under the Liberal Moon Jae-in's administration in 2019. But Mr. Yoon appeared to have angered President Moon after his probe led to the resignations of two of his justice ministers. From then on, the relationship between Mr. Yoon, who was handpicked by President Moon to clean up the government and go after the country's most powerful, turned sour. When Yoon decided to essentially go after one of Moon's men, um, and that's also going to have implications for Moon as well in his presidency, um, that he wasn't happy with it and he fell out of favor. And um, for the South Korean public who was enraged to see corruption and you know not just corruption but unaccountability and to see somebody from the administration actually take an objective stance and and persistently go after um, the wrongdoings was refreshing so while he was basically um, I would say maybe scooted out um, from the administration um, there was something else that was basically welcoming him on the other side, which was um, the opposition looking to bring about a refreshed, I would say, um, appearance and image um, of, of conservatives and what they represented. Mr. Yoon's image of a no-nonsense public prosecutor who's committed to the principle of fairness and the rule of law has attracted the attention of the opposition. After a series of corruption scandals involving its last two presidents, Park Geun-hye and Lee Myung-bak, the Conservative People Power Party was in need of a candidate who could help improve its battered image and boost its profile. The clash between Mr. Yoon and President Moon had opened up the path for the opposition. From being a hero for the Liberals, Mr. Yoon is now seen as a saviour for the Conservatives. So Yoon basically represents the establishment, um, the, the typical conservative party in South Korea. Uh, we don't really expect him to be a dramatic departure from what we've seen from um, you know, our, our previous uh, conservative candidates from South Korea. His claim to fame, of course, is that he represents justice. He professes to be somebody who is um, honest, um, somebody who's going to bring justice and equality um, to the South Korean uh, society. But Mr. Yoon's failure to present a clear policy vision and mediate a deep internal feud within his party had raised doubts about his ability as a leader. As a result, Conservative Party leader Lee Jun Suk resigned as a senior campaign official in December last year following disagreement with Yun's men. Reports of Yun's wife allegedly falsifying her credentials while applying for teaching position at two universities have also caused his popularity to plunge. Internally, the party itself, I think, is going through a lot of upheavals with personalities and um, you know, certain individuals wanting to um, you know, have a greater presence. And I think that the, the infighting, I think, is, is something, it's a vulnerability, of course. By the end of 2021, Yoon Sok-yu's double-digit lead had evaporated as Lee Jae-myung began pulling ahead in most polls. Mr. Yun eventually managed to put his house in order and iron up his differences with the party chairman. That has allowed him to eke out a small lead ahead of the Democratic Party presidential candidate, 
Lee Jae-myung just one month before the election. Some feel many South Koreans are just fed up with the status quo and are eager for a change of leadership. Jong Hee Young is a hair salon owner in Hongdae, a neighborhood in Seoul known for its urban arts and indie music culture. The Moon administration has been too obsessed with ending the war with the North that he neglected the affairs and welfare of the South Koreans. He feels that a change in government would be good for the country to help bring the focus back to the people. Mr. Jung, whose business suffered tremendously since the COVID-19 outbreak, even feels that relations with North Korea will improve under PPP. But that departure from the current administration's soft stance towards the North is stoking fears among several regional players. Some are concerned that PPP's hardline stance could further destabilize the region, including his call for a preemptive strike on North Korea. On the stage, he basically said preemptive strike, but that's going to rile up all the tensions on the Korean Peninsula. You don't even know what's going to happen. Maybe he said it as a rhetoric, but that was a very, um, I wouldn't say it was a, a rational sort of move by a contender for the presidential election. Because you're basically saying, oh, I'm, I'm a warmongering, I'm a warmongering presidential candidate. So how would regional politics look like should Mr. Yun and the PPP come to power? 
could it be the start of a new era of stability in the region? Or will it lead to a heightening of political tensions in the Korean Peninsula? And will South Korean voters give their stamp of approval to Mr. Yoon by voting him into office and bring the Conservatives back to power? It's a race, too close to call. Just a week to go before South Koreans go to the polls, it remains unclear which of the two leading candidates will emerge victorious. Recent polls have shown that Lee Jae-myung from the ruling Democratic Party is trailing behind the candidate from the opposition People Power Party, Yoon Suk-yul, but only marginally. So right now, um, I think Yoon is is leading um, in, in some of the polls, but it's not a huge margin. So I think it's still a um, a difficult. It's it's really a toss up, and I think the the most critical factors will be again less on you know what campaign promise um, is going to be most appealing to the public, but I think there is going to be some kind of a wild card, um, either from the DP or from the PPP about the candidate himself. And that's where I think there will be more damage and perhaps um, and, and, you know, upsetting of, 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 of the tables. Um, so it's, I, I cannot really say who I think is going to win, but I think if the, if the trajectory right now is consistent, um, we should expect to see a UN presidency. But a lot could change between now and March 9th, when South Koreans finally cast their ballot. And it remains unclear what is the main deciding factor that will tilt the balance. Will it be personality, security or the economy? We have two major issues in the coming presidential election. One is economy and the other is security. But usually in the presidential election, economy is much more important factor. To, to determine the outcome of the election rather than uh, security issues. Many small business owners around the world have been severely impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic, and South Korea is no exception. 47-year-old Jun hee Yong, for one, is unhappy with Moon's administration's handling of the pandemic. He feels that Moon's obsession with security with the North and his rush to score a diplomatic win before he leaves office has caused him to lose support among voters like Jung. I don't think about the future. I think that the future is always the future of the country. I think that the future of the country is very important to the people of the country. So I think that the future is very difficult for the future of the country. I think that the future is very difficult for the future. Mr. Jung says his income has been more than halved since before the pandemic, and he feels that the Moon government's COVID-19 response did not seem to be well thought out. Ah, 문재인 대통령이 이번 코로나 사태 대처하는 방식 같은 경우는 저희 대한 소감은 너무 무작위로 하는 것 같고 그냥 국민들한테 강요만 하는 것 같고 뭐 하지 말라는 것만 많고. 제대로 된 저희들한테 그런 방법이나 저런 걸좀 많이 아쉬운 점이 있는 것 같아요. 그리고 무조건 소상공인이나 국민들한테 뭐 하지 마라, 뭐 하지 마라 거의 그냥 그런 식이기 때문에 상당한 불만이 많은 것 같습니다. I think economics is the most important thing for the Koreans right now. Uh, looking at just the pandemic and how it's affected. Um, small businesses, how it's affected, um, you know, young employees. Uh, it's it's all related. The South Korean public um, is going to be, I think, less critical about the foreign policy record because it doesn't directly, you know, it's it doesn't have a direct impact on their everyday lives. But they will be critical, I think, in terms of what Moon was able to deliver, um, in terms of helping them bring food to the table, um, you know, earning an income and and improving. 
um, the, the quality of life for not just the upper class of Koreans, but all Koreans. The reality is, more than 86% of South Koreans have now been fully vaccinated, and 60% of them have received a booster shot. To date, South Korea has largely been a COVID-19 mitigation success story. But the success has so far been overshadowed by a dramatic rise in the Omicron infections. In February this year, daily cases hit a record of more than 170,000. But the good thing is, the number of deaths has remained relatively low. Omicron병中国人民国人民国人民国人民国人民国人民国人民国人民国人民国人民国人民国人民国人民国人民国人民国人民国人民国人民国人民国人民国人民国人民国人民国人民国人民国人民国人民国人民国人民国人民国人民国
The new president will also have to deal with a surging unemployment rate, soaring home prices, widening wealth inequality, and a pandemic-hit economy. Who will voters pick as their new president? Will they give their stamp of approval to the tried and tested formula of the incumbent Moon Jae-in by voting in Lee Jae-myung into office? Or will they put their faith in Yoon Sok yul to help rebuild his party's credibility and improve Moon Jae-in's dismal records? All will be clear when 44 million eligible voters cast their ballot to choose the country's 20th president on March 9th.